All right, hey, what's up guys? It's Roy here and I have the brand new iPhone SE 2022 edition here in front of you. I picked it up at T-Mobile. I actually did a poll on my channel to see if you wanted black or the product red. And this is what y'all picked. As you can see, it is the product red here. Um, so I wanted to get this because this is a great phone that is gonna be fantastic for people that are looking to get into Apple, but not break the bank and just kind of, you know, get a taste of what Apple has to offer and then maybe eventually step up to the big boy pro models. But uh, with this, uh, this is the product red. So um, as far as this video goes, I deliberately did not break the seal or anything yet. So I can actually do a true unboxing and first impressions video for y'all. So as far as the packaging goes, as you can see here, the red uh, is kind of the theme. So you got this red holographic iPhone logo there. You have the Apple logo in red. As you can see here, you can see the red border around the phone itself and the red Apple logo there. And then on the back, just the same old, same old. Now this is the 64 gig version, which is $429, uh, which is pretty dang affordable. Um, if you wanna step up, they do have 128 and 256 gigs. Uh, it's really only like 50 bucks more to double your storage, which is a no brainer in my opinion, if you are going to jump into this phone, uh, cause I think 128 is kind of the new standard. Uh, so for 479, you can get the 128 gigs. And for 256 gigs, uh, it jumps up to $579. So still under 600 bucks uh, to get 256. So let's go ahead and get this bad boy open. So as far as this goes, you just peel the sticker there and shake it here. And there's the beautiful new shiny red, as you can see there. Uh, so I'm going to put that to the side here and let's see what we get inside the box. So obviously no charging brick. Now we do get a USB-C to lightning cable here. So that's tending to be the new standard. And then inside of the packaging, you know, we have your design by Apple in California, a little paperwork stuff here. Let's see what comes inside your product red uh, little pamphlet or paperwork here and it just says that it's in partnership with red and apple will contribute a portion of this phone's purchase to the global fund to support hiv and aids programs uh, to help deliver uh, an aids free generation so you can go to red.org to find out more about that but that's kind of cool that it's not only just red but it's you know for a good cause you do have your sim card ejector tool just some paperwork here and then a sticker. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't do red, which I thought would be a cool touch, but um, they decided just to stick with the regular one. So now let's go ahead and take a peek at the actual phone. So let's flip it over and get the sticker off here. So as you can see here, it's got the sticker for the touch ID. And then of course it's letting you know for the alert uh, slider and volume up and down. And then of course your power button on this side. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh. All right, complete protection there guys. I didn't realize it was on the back there, but there it is. There is the product red and that thing is beautiful. I usually go with black phones, but uh, something uh, just stood out to me about just grabbing a red one. Uh, obviously, this is going to be a phone I'm not going to keep for long term. It's just really to kind of test and play with it a little bit. And then I'll jump on demand on another phone uh, with T-Mobile. Uh, but there it is. It is a very compact phone. Absolutely love the size of this phone. So while we're looking at it here, um, so we got obviously a single camera here on the back with the flash next to it. Uh, you got the very shiny reflective Apple logo. And then of course it does say product red right there. On the side, like I said, we do have our uh, power button and our SIM card tray there. You got your antenna bands here. Uh, you got your lightning port uh, down here. And then of course your speakers. And then on this side, obviously you just got your 
uh, volume up and down buttons and your um, you know, alert slider there to do uh, silent or volume. And then nothing here at the top. Very small, guys. Like I said, it's a super, super compact phone. As far as the measurements go of the actual device, uh, it's 5.45 inches here. And then you're looking at 2.65 inches in width and then only 0.29 inches in thickness. So as far as the depth of the phone, it's very, very skinny. Uh, it's super small. I mean, just comparing it to my iPhone 13 Pro here, as you can see, uh, it just is dwarfed by it. I mean, obviously it's not huge as far as uh, the 13 Pro goes, but just looking at it from this perspective alone, you can see how much more rounded this one is because obviously it's an old you know, iPhone 8 body. But the point is, is, you know, it's just so much thinner, um, but you're also getting uh, obviously uh, touch ID, which is a huge win. So let's go ahead and turn it on and let's see if there's any juice in here. All right, so while it's booting up, let's talk about a little bit of the specs of this phone. So you're getting an A15 Bionic chip with this. You're getting six cores of CPU with two performance and four efficiency cores, four core GPU and a 16 core neural engine. So essentially you're getting the exact same performance out of this phone like you are with the 13 lineup, which is pretty awesome, except obviously it's in the older iPhone 8 body. Now, as far as the screen goes, now it's booted up here. So one thing I'm gonna point out is as you can see here, the animations aren't going to be smooth and buttery like the 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max. So it is only 60 Hertz, but that's to be expected with a phone in this price range. So let me go ahead and go through the motions to get it set up here real quick. And uh, I'll be right back with you. So I wanted to jump back in real quick because obviously before I get everything fully done, this is something that stands out the most to the iPhone users when it comes to the SE model because obviously everything now has Face ID, but this has Touch ID, which is something that I really wish at some point iPhone will bring back as a secondary thing, even if it's like on the power button or something like that. But I just wanted to point that out that you do get that old school Touch ID so whenever you're setting it up, it's very simple. You got a very nice haptic feedback as I'm placing my thumb up and down on the screen here. And then it says adjust your grip so I can kind of move my hand around just in case if my thumb hits it a little bit differently. But I just wanted to point that out in my setup process that the Touch ID is awesome. Uh, so let me go ahead and continue and I'll be right back with y'all. All right, guys, so I got it all booted up here. Now, as you can see, it is still kind of going through my backup and all that. So the apps are still loading, but I wanted to take advantage of showing y'all a quick few things with this unboxing and first impressions video. And then I'll do a full review uh, in about a week or so. Now, as far as the screen goes, uh, it's just so cool to see this tiny little screen right here. It's only 4.7 inches, so it's a super small screen in the scheme of things when most phones now are averaging six inches to seven inches in screen size. But as you can see here, I mean, this thing is a pocket friendly and hand friendly, purse friendly, whatever you want to call it, phone. It is super, super tiny. But as far as the screen goes, I can appreciate that because the one handed operations is flawless. Now, as you can see there with this older design of a phone, when you swipe down, you're getting your notification shade. And then when you swipe up, that's when you're getting, you know, controls and all that stuff as far as the control center goes. So um, I thought that was kind of old school, brought me back to the old iPhone days. But as far as the screen goes though, like I said, it's a great looking screen. It's flat. Uh, it's getting about 625 at max brightness for the nits. So it's not the brightest screen out there, but you kind of know that's what you're getting into when you're buying a $429 phone. Now, the other thing about this screen is that obviously I already mentioned, it is only 60 Hertz. So you are not getting that fluid 120 Hertz display. Uh, but once again, that's to be expected with this price range. Now, the other thing that I wanna talk about are the cameras. So as far as the camera goes, you got a 12 megapixel camera up here 
that uh, is capable of doing all the basics, you know, the portrait modes, the filters, have slow motion, all that good stuff. So if I do turn the camera app on and go to photo here, as you can see, you got portrait mode, you got the uh, panoramic mode, uh, and then of course video capabilities and all that good stuff. So for the rear, like I said, it's 12 megapixels and you can record um, 4K. Now the stuff that I was looking or reading about said you can do 4K up to 60 frames per second. But when I go up here, you got 4K 24, you got 4K 30, and then that's it. It doesn't give me the 60 option. So comment down below and let me know if I'm just doing something completely wrong. But yeah, so I can only go up to 4K 30 um, with the uh, rear camera. Now on the front facing camera, it is only seven megapixels and you can record uh, 1080 at 30 frames per second. So the cameras are gonna be capable now with my full testing. Uh, I'll you know obviously report more on that, but at the end of the day, it's a completely capable camera and the other thing is at this price range, it's probably the best camera on any phone in that $400 range. So that's just something to point out. Uh, you do get IP67 water resistance rating. Uh, I don't know the size of the battery exactly, but uh, I know as far as fast charging capabilities go, you can use like their fast charging adapters. And it says you can uh, actually charge the phone from zero to 50% in about 30 minutes. So to be determined on the battery life and everything with just this smaller device uh, and see how long it actually lasts. It says it's a better battery, but to be determined with my testing. Well, one other thing I guess I should point out is that it is sub six 5G. Obviously don't buy this phone if you're just only looking to get a 5G phone. Um, but I just wanted to point that out as well that they made a big deal about that at the launch event that it has 5G. So I guess it's nice that it has it, but obviously it's just sub six. So it's nothing fantastic, but at least it's better than 3G, right? So, um, but yeah, guys, there it is. So hit that like button if you liked the video. If you loved it, please subscribe and ring that notification bell for up-to-date content. Uh, so be safe. God bless. I'll see you on the next one.